I believe that miracles could happen, but not very often. Like, not today. I don't, I don't know that miracles ever existed. They certainly don't exist today. Well, I haven't seen a miracle happen yet. I think there are always possibilities around for miracles. Yeah, I believe in miracles. They happen. I don't believe in them. There's happenings, but there's no miracles. If it is, it's just a stroke of uh, fate, and, uh, and that's how it works. You can't look at it as a miracle. I believe in miracles today. Well, in my own life, when I stop believing, they stop happening. I personally don't believe in miracles or in the supernatural, but that in the course of human history, there has been a need on the part of human beings to do so. My name is Florida Cormier, and in 1955, in the New Brunswick Hospital, I died following an emergency surgery. I then spent three and a half minutes into eternity before God revived my body. And just to be alive, well, it's a miracle. Now the man who believes in miracles, Mr. Benny Hinn. God, you know that he's real? You know that he's alive and well? I know you can't see him. I know he's invisible to your eyes. He's invisible to my eyes too. But once you receive Jesus Christ, his own son, as your Savior. There's a sudden reality that comes into your life. You're born again, and God becomes very real to you. He's no longer God, your Creator. He suddenly becomes God, your Heavenly Father. See, when Jesus comes into your life, God becomes your Father. And this same God is the God of miracles. He is the Lord that created the things around us. He is the Lord that created the sky, the heavens, the sea, the earth, the trees, the animals, flowers. Of course, He created you and me. This same God sent His own Son to die on a cross so the sins of humankind would be paid for forever. And today you are going to meet a guest, precious woman. This lady actually died for three and a half minutes, and God the Father brought her back to life to share about it and what she saw. You won't want to miss this. And she was healed miraculously at one of our own services. My guest today is a very special lady. She had received tremendous miracles. And I'm just amazed what Jesus has done for her. Absolutely amazed. Florida, I am really amazed what God has done for you. There's no one like, like Jesus in the whole world. Do you know that? I know. Now, That's you're from Oshawa. Yes. And you are a married woman. Yes. And how many children do you have? Three. Three, Three children. children. How many boys and how many girls? One boy and two girls. One boy and two. All right. Now, now you had uh, a lot of things wrong with you before your healing. 
Wh what was wrong with you? I had polio. Why? I had uh, one, only one quarter of my eardrum left in my ear. I had arthritis in my arm, and I had a broken arm and a broken rib cage, and also migraine headaches. And the Lord just miraculously healed me of everything. I really? just praise Him. Tell me a little bit about your uh, polio. Uh, um, well, I had uh, polio meningitis, and I was yes. in an arm lung. Yes. And I could not walk. Yes. God healed my legs. He lengthened them two inches. Uh, I had no ankle bone. Really? And he just, he just did a beautiful job. Praise God. What, what did the polio do to your uh, whole body? How did it affect your life? Well, I couldn't run. I couldn't play with the other children. And I used to get so depressed. Really? Very depressed. And uh, I always believed in God. Always. Yeah, well, well, what was your... Now, are you, are you a Catholic? Yes, Is that what I was you, brought up Roman. I was brought up Roman Catholic. You were very, yes. very in a strict way, were you brought Yes, I was brought up in an orphanage run by nuns. You mean your mom and dad? I was in an orphanage at 10. My well, what happened to your parents? Well, they just deserted us. Really? My dad is an alcoholic. And they just... And you went to a... Uh, what was it, a... Uh, Catholic orphanage? Yeah, run by nuns. I, I was in there. Something. I didn't know that. Praise do you know that I was brought up also yes, by the I nuns? Yes, Yes. That is something. I used to go to school there and then go to different p homes. Yes. Like during holiday, I was in... Tell me, did you, did you uh, this polio, when you had your uh, polio, your ear problems, you wore braces on your legs, did you ever think of the Lord? Yes, did I did. Really? I always... Even though I never had that personal relationship with him, yeah. I always knew that he was there, always. Isn't that something? You know, I have something interesting here that you gave me. Your doctor, Dr. Rice, is right. it from New Brunswick? Right. Says that you had polio. You were born in July 31st, 1947. That's right. And in 48, you developed polio. And you were very ill in the hospital. Mm-hmm. I was in an iron lung. In an iron lung? Yeah. My lungs collapsed on me. Really? That's right. On the medical report. That is something. Well, uh, well here, it. Uh, also, you have Dr. Nedo. Nedo right. Uh, all right. From Camelton, New Brunswick. Uh, and he was your ear problem? Uh, ear your, specialist, your ears, yeah. Your ear specialist? Right. What happened to you? I had, uh, I went into the hospital. Yes. And I had mastoid and abscess. And my ear used to swell up, and all the infection used to run down my face here. Really? And all the bone rotted in the back of my ear. And uh, so they had to remove three quarters of my eardrum, plus the back bone in my ear. Oh, my. You had polio, you had an ear problem, they removed part of your eardrum. Eardrum? And the bone behind my ear. You know, I've got here evidence, besides watching you here, a brand new woman, that says you were healed. In the Oshawa Times, there was an article written, March 15th. Right. It says that you, uh, Florida Cormier, from Oshawa, once had polio and walked with a support shoe and steel bars up to her knee. After attending a medical service, listen to this, I like this, after attending a medical service, you were healed completely. I'm amazed at this. You know, I, I really like what the uh, news reporter says here. She says, fantastic is the word to describe Praise these God. stories. To many, they are merely the products of the imagination. But to Florida Cormier and others like you, they are very real. That's right. He is real. I also like, yeah, here it says, uh, Dr. Nado. How, how do you say that? Neto, automatist. What do you call him? He's a specialist for eyes, ears, nose, and throat. Is he? <laughs> yeah. And he says that both of your ears are excellent. excellent. Right. That is amazing. Florida, we are going to have a look at a film of a uh, service that we had where your arm was healed. And you know the power of the Holy Spirit comes into these meetings in such a way. People are healed when Jesus is glorified, That's when right. he is magnified. 
and we're going to see the part where you know I say somebody's arm is uh, being healed now. And you were not healed because I, I said somebody's arm is right. being healed. You were healed because you were worshiping Jesus. And when you were worshiping, the Holy Spirit came over you. You're a Praise brand God. new lady. Let's have a look at that film. This woman could not lift this arm up. <laughs> Give the Lord a good air. Come on. did you fall for it? I mean, we saw you fall in there. Well, you know, why did you fall? well, the anointing of the Lord comes upon you. You just can't stand up. You, you know, this happens so often. I don't understand why. You see, when the power of God comes over a person, That's they can't right. stand up. Tell me, describe your feelings, will you, to us? What happened? What did you feel? Well, the first healing I had was my rib cage. Yes. And I went to a service there. And a lady, she was dying of cancer and asked me to take her. And I took her, and God came and touched me and healed me that night. And then I had one quarter of my eardrum in my ear. I couldn't hear my left ear. And I was at one of the services in Oshawa. And I just closed my eyes, and I started worshiping in the Lord. And all of a sudden, I seen the Lord walk right through the crowd, and he touched my ear. You saw Jesus walking? Right, right through the crowd. Oh. And my hearing was restored. Praise what God. did it look like? When you saw him walk. I saw his feet and just in a white garment and it was sort of brushing as he went by and he just faded through the crowd. The people that were there, he just went right through them and walked right through oh, them. What happened to your to your ears when you saw that? All of a sudden in my ear, just like it popped, I heard a pop. And then Don from 100 Huntley Street was yes. playing the organ. And all of a sudden I said, I can hear, I can hear. I could actually hear those organ you keys. You could not hear Donnie playing the organ? No, I could hear very well from my right, but not from my left. I couldn't hear. And I remember I could hear those keys, and I was just worshiping God and thanking Him for healing my ear. Praise God. Now, with, with your rib, like rib cage when it was healed, did you feel anything come over you? Yeah, it was like a heat just come right through me. And I couldn't even walk. The anointing of the Lord, the power of the Lord upon me was so strong. Lord, the power of the Lord upon me was so strong that I couldn't even walk. I had two of the ushers carry me forward. Well, I remember when, listen, Florida, when you came up on that platform, I mean, you looked bad. I look at you now, I can't believe it's you. Praise God. Now, tell us, you know, to tell us about, you know, you dying, yes. and being brought back to life. Mm -hmm. What what happened there? Please tell us about that. Well, when I went into the hospital for the surgery, 
the year that God has healed. Yes. I was eight years old, and the night before I went to the hospital, I was in so much pain, and I went to my mom's room, and she said, when I walked in there, an angel came and woke her, and when she sat up, it was me. And the next day, she took me to the doctor, and they said that they had waited too long, and they, all the bone in the back of my ear here was completely rotted. My ear drummed the inner ear, and so somehow when I went in for that surgery, I knew somehow I wasn't going to come out. And when I went into the surgery, following the surgery, I remember I felt like I was going under. I could hear people. And I heard the nurse saying, she said to Dr. Netto, she's going. And then I heard Dr. Netto saying, she's gone. And then I heard like a humming sound. And then all of a sudden it was quiet. There was nothing. And then I, was, I saw myself lying there, but my spirit just lifted from my body. And as it lifted, I saw this earth in total darkness. And all around this earth there was demons. And I remember I was so frightened. I was only eight years old. And they were trying to reach me. And I, I became so frightened. And all of a sudden I saw a glimpse of light. And, and as I saw that glimpse of light out of all that darkness, I saw two angels of God, one on each side, and they brought me up very gently. And we went into an opening. It was like an opening in a cloud. We entered into heaven, and there was so much love and peace and joy. And then I saw an angel standing there with the Lamb's Book of Life. And I remember I tried to look in that book. And she said, I say she because the angel was so beautiful. And he said, only God knows whose names are written in this book. Now, you actually felt yourself leave your physical yes, body. Yes, I did. Were you still you when you left? Yes, I was the same me except in the spirit. Like my spirit just lifted from my body. Like your body Although my body was, was suddenly nothing. Right. My body was laying there and I saw my body laying there. And I couldn't, and I said, what's going on? I figured that once we're dead, that's it. There's nothing to it. Now, when you were caught up and you saw this beautiful, uh, did you say it, it was a light that you saw? Yeah, a bright light. Like, it was complete blackness. And all of a sudden, it was just like a ray of light. just shined down did, right towards me. Did you see Jesus? Then I saw the angel, and then she told me about the lion's book. And then I saw he Jesus. He told you. He. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw Jesus walking towards me. It was Moses and Elijah. And Jesus walked towards me, yeah. And he said, Florida, he said, come, I want to show you something. We came out of heaven, and we crossed over like a valley or a gully. And he pointed his finger like this, and he said, look down there. And as I looked, I saw people's body in flames, but only from the waist down. This part of them was just wrapped in flames, the top part. And they had their hands up like this, and they were screaming unto God. And I became so frightened, and I said, Lord, why are they there, Lord? And so he said to me, Florida, he said, come and I'll tell you. We crossed over. We came back into heaven. And then he started telling me, he said, Florida, nearly 2,000 years ago, he said, I came into this world. He said, and he said, they put nails in my hands. And I could actually look in his hands and see those holes right through his hands. And he said, they put nails in my feet. He said, they whipped me. They spit in my face. They put thorns on my head. And he said, I did this all because I love them. And I love you, Florida. And I want you to tell them that heaven and hell is for real. Yes, ma'am. And then he showed me heaven. And the streets were paved in gold. And just on that gold was a very thin sheet of crystal. And I saw a person, I saw people in heaven, and I said, God, where are the men and where are the women? And God smiled at me and said, Lord, in heaven there's no men and women. They're just spirit bodies. And then we came back where I had entered in. And I said, Lord, please don't let me come back here. Please, God. And he said, Florida, you must come back. You must come back and tell them that I love them and that heaven and hell is for real. And all they have to do is open their hearts and receive me as their Lord. This is why we are preaching the gospel. 
Hallelujah. This is why Huntley is, is, is on there. This is why people are preaching the word of God. Lord, I'm amazed. When you came back into your body and you yes. woke up and got up, were there people around you at that moment? When I came back, I, I went, first, before this happened, the Lord was transfigurated in front of me. Really? I saw his eyes and they shone like the sun and his garment became so white and the angel was standing next to him and she said, don't look up at his face. And I keep saying she because the, the angel had long, yes. the hair was down to here and he was so beautiful. Really? And I remember I got down on my knees and I was in front of the Lord and I had my head down and I was crying and I was saying, God. Please don't let me come back. And, and then it came. Then I came. Then you came back right after that. And I could hear the nurse saying to Dr. Neto, how long has she been dead? Wow. And Dr. Neto said, I really don't know, about three to three and a half That's minutes. That's amazing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. You are sitting here well and alive. Because God. And the Lord is the God of miracles. Praise God. We'll be right back right after <laughs> Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loves you and cares for you. I want you to know that. Wonderful Jesus, we ask you that you will do a mighty work in the life of this one watching right now. Precious Jesus, may your power and your presence flow through their lives. This moment I ask you to surround that one who needs your love, your comfort and assurance. Yes, Place your loving arms around this one and set this one free from bondage. Bring the liberty and joy in your life, in this one's life. I ask this in your wonderful name, Jesus. Thank you. 